those were really big when we were kids, but that was not one. I didn't ever read any of those series that, like, everyone was into, though. Like, I didn't ever read Goosebumps or Animorphs or any of that. I, I read a couple Goosebumps. I didn't read any Animorphs, but I remember there was one one of the Captain Underpants books. Um, I It was it had, like, a villain, a specific villain, Professor Poopy Pants. Yes. I'm and familiar. <laughs> it, had that, it had that chart where it would, you got to make your own Poopy Pants name. <laughs> in the book and that was so much fun yeah i was just the weird kid who checked out the uh like educational book on aztec inca and maya every single time <laughs> I, think, I, li- I don't know i, I had a morbid fascination with the pictures of the mummies i don't think that's that weird i think every kid had like that one thing that they would always like for me it was i would say probably dinosaurs and like paleontology i would always go for those books yeah, so, I was always the archaeology kid. I was always into, like, ancient Egypt and stuff. Yeah, I think every kid had their their one thing that, even if it was really nerdy, they were like, oh my gosh, I love this. Yeah. I, it, like, it's so funny, because as a kid, I was always, like, a really, really big baby about scary stuff. Like, now I'm really into it. But I remember just being enthralled by the page that had, like, the mummies in the, like, clay pots all curled up. Like, it was really, like, creepy and morbid. But I was like, this is... This is something I, I've never seen before. Like, I don't even know how to handle this information about these people being mar- being buried in clay pots. <laughs> yeah, it was weird. You let an angel in. So I, it's sort of off topic, but we're talking about, like, you know, mummies and stuff. And I was just, I, w- I think it was on, it was either facebook and it was just like a video streaming through there or i was in like a youtube hole where you know you're like you know what youtube hole is where you're just stuck watching random videos but on the topic of mummies i believe it was a place in indonesia on this specific island where they keep their dead family members in the house with them I kind of remember reading about that and it's like they had like a video and everything of like so it Basically, it was the wealthier families kept the family members in their houses with them dead, sort of decomposing. I think they use, like, different things to preserve them a little bit. Um, But the wealthier families keep them there longer, up to a year or more. And then the poorer families, just a couple weeks. But it's like, I don't know. It was so interesting because you not only see this strange glimpse of this completely different culture that has a completely different view of death. And also just people hugging their decomposing family members. Yeah, that definitely sends a chill down the spine. But, like, I don't want to be disrespectful to different cultures because absolutely that's the way they do things. Like, it was fascinating. It was, was, yeah, it was kind of beautiful, too, because they, like, they just, like, adorn them with all, like, they still feed them and, like, they don't. You know, they just, like, bring them food. I don't know. It's really interesting. Yeah. Now that you're talking more about it, I definitely remember um, seeing that video. And, yeah, just really fascinating stuff. (laughs) Yeah, I'm really, really fascinated in different um, sort of cultures, relationships with death. I I worked in a funeral home for, like, six months. And so it, it really kind of stuck with me the the different ways that people grieve and deal with like death and dying and I've come to the conclusion that like whatever whatever you gotta do just do it (laughs) don't worry about (laughs) don't worry about what's morbid don't worry about what's normal like just grieve how you gotta grieve yeah I it, it isn't I mean, because that you know it's also been used as a metaphor for the civil rights movement, which is a very apt and important comparison as well. Um, with people sort of comparing, as you know, for better or worse, Professor X to Martin Luther King Jr. and Magneto to Malcolm X. That 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 one kind of breaks down sometimes, but it's a it's on a surface level, it's a it's a fair enough metaphor. Well, and and the one. Um blatant use of of real world uh discrimination they they start off the bat with is uh magneto in the holocaust 
Yes, absolutely. That's one, that's one example they don't shy away from. Although, I don't know how how deep they get into it in the comics. I mean, certainly in the movies, it's like, you know what's going on because we know about the Holocaust, but it's not necessarily discussed because they immediately take it to the whole a mutant place. Yeah. But, I mean, the, the analog is unmistakable. Yeah, because we know exactly where they are. Yeah, concentration camps and all of that stuff. Like, it's, it's, it's a really blatant connection being made. Which you can't necessarily say about other social justice issues. Yeah. At least, at least in X-Men. I know that um, Black Panther um, certainly does not shy away from race issues. No, oh, well, that's kind of, yeah. That's Black Panther's wheelhouse right there. Exactly. I mean, the name is immediately politically charged. And then there is, you know, it does end up being connected to um, to X-Men in the connection between Black Panther and Storm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I believe, is Storm going to, I don't know if Storm's going to be in the new Black, Black Panther movie. I don't. I don't recall. I don't. I don't recall reading about that, but that doesn't mean it's. I not don't know if they case. can do it just because of the whole split between X Men and. Oh, you know what? Yeah, I think you're right. Disney. Like they're they're owned by different companies, so they. They can... would have to hire a different actor, I think, for her. And they would have to not refer to her as being a mutant. They'd have to call her something else, the oh, way they did with that's Quicksilver. So Disney, just give them a shitload of cash and buy that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Can we just reconcile this? Because, or you know, at least do the Spider-Man thing and share, right? <laughs> Speaking of Spider-Man and queer, um, you, <laughs> I'm sure you saw the the clip of uh, the new Spider-Man actor um, doing a lip sync performance to Rihanna's "Umbrella." <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, you know, I love that kid. He's he's very cute. I really enjoyed him in in uh, Winter or not Winter Soldier Civil War uh, Civil War. So I, I have high hopes for that movie. I have the highest of hopes for that movie. I think it's gonna be really good, really really funny and cute. And yeah, I believe in it. Me too. I mean, it would be nice if they were to sort of give up on the Peter Parker thing altogether and give us a different spider-man give us you know let's have yeah. maybe a little Miles Morales in there. But if you're not going to, if you're gonna stick with Pete. This looks like a pretty damn good Peter Parker movie. Well, and if they had just changed, like, I I know they want the whole brand rec- recognition for audiences immediately, but they could have avoided all of their troubles with uh, 20th Century Fox. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they just done a different version of Spider-Man. Yeah, I don't know that they could have because I think Fox, like, specifically owns the, you know, the license to Spider-Man. So even oh, if they did yeah, a different Spider-Man, it would still be Spider-Man. Yeah. You let an angel in. But uh, that's funny that that is sort of canon in the comics because, boy, is it not in the new TV show. I know, and that that is legitimately the only reason I'm not watching that show. Really? Because I am super interested in, you know, a a, a show based around Archie comics because I've had a casual interest, especially with two characters coming out in the last 10 years. Um, yeah. But then like making such a huge point of making the character of Jughead not asexual. Yeah. He's like got the most sort of significant romance of the series. Yeah. I find that really upsetting, especially because the actor playing Jughead was like, I fought to have him be asexual. But see, it's what is it? Cole Sprouse that's playing him. Uh, one of the Sprouses. I one of the Sprouses. I think it's Cole Sprouse, Probably. and um, he's just a cutie boy that everyone wants to see smooch on somebody. And so they were like, "Sorry, buddy, but we got to use your smoochable little boy face." <laughs> you know, like that's really icky to me. The whole industry side of that, like mm-hmm. it could. I think it could have been really powerful to have young people see like. Oh sure, he he's known as this like teenage romance symbol from other stuff and from this, but why can't he also like why can't they identify just differently that than that? Yeah, yeah. I just again, it upsets me because I I respect and love the stories of asexual people, and I think it's really important to portray them. 
Yeah, that would be really a big sort of thing for that kind of a show to do, though, because, I mean, those teen series like Riverview and, like, you know, what have you, there are a lot of those. Is it on the CW? Yes, it is. Yeah, so every <laughs> CW series is for teenage girls who want to watch people smooching. Like, that's what those shows are for. Well, and that's what's holding them back, honestly. Because yeah. I mean, they know they're, they know their audience. They're... They know it, but if, if they were to just branch out, they might draw in a wider audience. Yeah, oh, oh, absolutely. Um, I think that they are just sort of, they feel secure in the one that they've got and don't want to risk it, which, I don't know. I mean, that's it's not very artistically uh, interesting or progressive to just be like, hmm, we're good here. But, well, and what I, I mean, use as a counterpoint to whatever their position on it is, is like thinking of ABC Family now, what's it called now? Oh, God, I don't even remember. Yeah, I, now that it's, you say that, they did like change to something else. Not, but I... A freeform. Freeform. Um, <laughs> what a dumb like, name. <laughs> even before they changed the name, but they were like really experimenting with way more queer characters in their shows. Yeah, they were taking their sort of formula of the, like, this is a family sitcom, and they were trying different permutations of that and seeing, like, how can we sort of alter and subvert and, and you know, bring new things to the genre of the family sitcom? And it's, it's a little off topic from comics, but uh, the show, oh, now I'm blanking on it because I stopped watching it. <laughs> oh, gosh, the one of, about the adopted kids. Oh, the Fosters. The Fosters? Yeah, so there's an interracial lesbian couple as the parents. <laughs> which is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then one of the adopted sons, he's like, I want I, I want to say he was like 12 to 15 when it's, uh, he was probably about 12 when it started. But like almost from the get-go, they start writing him as this little gay kid Mm-hmm. And like eventually he gets a boyfriend and everything, and it's like beautiful and so inspiring to watch it. Yeah, um, that kind of that. If we're you know go, going now into the subject of TV series, did you ever watch the FX series The Riches? No, I I I know of it, but I haven't seen it. Yeah, so it starred um, Eddie Izzard and Minnie Driver, and it's a very fun concept. Basically, they're they're a family there they and their three kids are a family of um american travelers which i'm not going to use the ethnic slur that most people would associate oh, with yeah. this kind of group uh the g word but yep. they are travelers um sort of the american branch of irish travelers and they end up stumbling upon this opportunity to take over the lives of this um deceased wealthy family who are moving to a new town and so they just sort of like slip into the lives of these people um and <laughs> try to con like this entire community uh, and it's really fun and sweet but their 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 youngest child their son he um throughout the series just sort of displays a very feminine personality and starts sort of presenting in a feminine way and i see this i mean this is a very clear uh analog to izard's own life because he is a transvestite and so, you know, this little boy, he's not necessarily, um, you know, we don't know that he's queer or not. He's, you know, that he's a little boy and that just doesn't really come up. Um, and he doesn't seem to, you know, identify as a girl, but he just likes to, you know, wear girl clothes and, and sort of present that way, much like Izzard's own story. Izzard and, and Driver are just a powerhouse together. I, I love them so much. Uh, it was a good show and I recommend it, but... As a just sort of a note on other kinds of identities that can be represented, and and they do it in a really good, sort of respectful way, because the family is just kind of like, all right, like that's that's your situation, okay, whatever you wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> Sharp.